Currently, uh, U.S. CO2 emissions are approximately 600,000 uh, million metric tons annually. It's actually a bit higher than that, but, but that's a ballpark figure. With a population of approximately 300 million people, that averages out to 20 tons of CO2 emissions per person. So in order to stabilize our emissions over the next decade at that level, we'd have to stabilize with our current population at 20, million, uh, 20 tons of CO2 emissions per capita. However, as you know, our population is not stable. It's growing. So we're on track to uh, head towards perhaps 360 million people by 2020. And if that's the case, in order to stabilize our CO2 emissions at that um, 6,000 uh, million tons total number, uh, we'd have to stabilize them instead at 16 and two-third tons per capita um, per person. That's going to be harder to do, right? They're going to be, uh, such reductions would be more expensive. They'd involve greater sacrifices for Americans than merely stabilizing per capita emissions. They demand some courageous leadership and expeditious political action here in our nation's capital. And uh, we know that's been in somewhat short supply lately on, on this particular topic at least. So these kinds of reductions are less likely to happen, it seems to me. At this point, a critic might say, well, wait a second. You've already told us we should be reducing our emissions. Why are you saying now that we can't, we can't do that? Uh, the problem is Americans' overconsumption. We need to cut back on consumption. And I agree with that. Limiting consumption has to play an important role in addressing our greenhouse gas emissions. Environmentalists should work to enact policies that reduce our fossil fuel consumption as much as possible. Uh, we should increase taxes on fossil fuels, I believe. We should redirect transportation funding to mass transit. There are many issues that we, we have to work on. However, re-engineering the world's largest economy and convincing our fellow citizens to change their consumption patterns are immense undertakings. They're going to be difficult, expensive, and we can assume only partly successful. Even if such efforts succeed beyond our fondest hopes, change will take time. So it's going to take time to uh, create tens of thousands of wind turbines, solar panels, additional power lines to carry uh, the electricity, et cetera. Can we really decrease per capita emissions 20% over the next 10 years? In theory, yes. But in practice, as you know, uh, there's a bitter fight over doing anything about this problem. Even if a 20% 20 per, 20 per capita reduction in greenhouse gas emissions over the next decade was possible, it would accomplish a lot more if our population wasn't growing. And as we go on, it gets harder and harder to imagine making sufficient reductions while still accommodating continued population growth. So let's look at some more numbers, this time projected out 50 years. So in 2060, cutting per capita emissions, let's say, 50 percent, this, by the way, is not enough to fully deal with the problem, the scientists tell us, but this might be the most that environmentalists can actually accomplish. So in 2060, cutting per capita emissions 50 percent with a population of about 300 million people, that would lead to a 50 percent reduction in total carbon emissions. But with a population of around 600 million people, U.S. CO2 emissions will remain right where they are now at about 6,000 uh, million metric tons annually. No reduction. So that first number, the 50 percent reduction, isn't enough, but it's, it's a significant accomplishment. That second number could fairly be described as a, a total failure. And don't forget, the scientists are telling us that we need to reduce our emissions even more to 20 to 30 percent of, of current levels, let's say, in 50 years. Let's take 25 percent as, as uh, a reasonable figure. So in 2060, to get to 25 percent of current CO2 emissions with a population that we have now, uh, our per capita emissions obviously would have to decline to 75 percent. But if we double our population, as we're on, approximately on track to do, uh, per capita emissions would instead have to decline 82.5 percent to 2.5 tons per person annually. Um, this is going to be much harder to accomplish. Um, is it possible? Maybe. It, it might be possible. Is it probable? I think not. 
And it's certainly less likely than a reduction to 25% because it would be, again, much more expensive and much more demanding. Now note that I don't claim that by itself uh, stabilizing our population is going to meet our global warming responsibilities any more than I think it's going to solve any of our other environmental problems. Uh, on the contrary, Americans must reduce our per capita energy consumption in order to meet the climate challenge. On the other hand, the evidence clearly shows that recent population growth has increased our total energy consumption and amplified our gluttony. It suggests that Americans must address both overconsumption and overpopulation if we hope to create a sustainable world. Now, this whole argument presupposes a commitment to environmentalism. If you aren't convinced of the moral imperative to reduce uh, carbon emissions or the moral imperative to share some of the landscape with other species, then nothing that I've said has any purchase on you necessarily. But for those who do share these moral commitments, I say that we won't succeed in creating a sustainable society with an ever-increasing American population. Now, it's, of course, possible to spin out scenarios in which our population doubles, triples, quadruples, and yet we still manage through miracles of technological cre creativity or ethical self-sacrifice to become ecologically sustainable. And my favorite example currently is this uh, little boomlet in discussions of... Uh, farming in high-rises, right? We're going to farm in high-rises, move all our farms into high-rises, and we can um, we could just devote all that land to wildlife, right? So if we do have all our farms in, in high-rises, my vote is for the pyramid, uh, because I want to worship these great models of technological achievement. But, you know, meanwhile, back here in the real world, uh, these kind of things are, are highly unlikely. Yes, we should move on the technological front. Yes, we should move on reducing consumption. All those are, are very important. But if we're taking our moral commitments seriously, I think we also have to uh, reduce overpopulation. Thank you. <laughs>